So it's been a while since I did an update uh, on my learning to program and the app rebuild. Um, and things have been going pretty well. So today I wanted to just kind of like walk through some of the stuff that I've been up to and uh, give you some demos of the features that I've built in the last little while. Um, but let's do a, a kind of check here on like project time. I think the last update I did was around 900 hours and I, now I'm approaching close to 1300. So I've been tracking my hours uh, for the last, like I wanna see how many in the first year. So since I started uh, 1,285 hours, which is a huge accomplishment for me because I tried to learn programming two times before and never got past 200 hours. And the unlock for me was starting, was thinking about um, making this project fun and identifying the things that I have that I naturally do that make things not fun for me. And that's typically grinding on something or putting excessive pressure on something. So I've been very conscious about not doing that. And, um, and so that's kind of, uh, I think I'm really, I'm actually really proud of being able, having done that. Uh, the other stat which I've been tracking a little bit is uh, lines of code. Not that that really matters, but just for me to get a sense of how much, uh, how big a project is based on code. Um, so I have 10,000 lines of code almost, about one in every three is a, is a comment. And I definitely have a lot of comments in my code because I'm explaining a lot of stuff to myself as I go. Um, so future Mark is, needs to know these comments because present Mark um, knows things for now, but will definitely forget them because he's not done them enough. So future Mark has been appreciating all these comments and maybe a uh, future collaborators will as well. In fact, I know they will as well. So those are a couple things uh, that I've been tracking. Also now just to talk through some of the project stuff, like steps remaining until launch. So this is the, like a sheet I've been using. I've shown this one before, but as you can see, there's like a whole bunch of new stuff over here. This is the, the axiom that the last, you know, 10% is 90% of the work. Um, so that's certainly been true. And so all this stuff has been added. But since I last talked, uh, check and reminders have been finished. I'll demo that feature in a moment. Uh, same thing with news toast sheet. I'll also demo that because I like that. Um, these two are connected, profile photo support and cloud image storage. That's a really big one for me because it's my first time like pulling real like big files from the cloud, setting that all up. And I think I've done it pretty well. Um, and I'm quite happy with it. And it unlocks a new feature that I've always wanted, which is being able to add photos to my notes you know, whether it's like a picture of you with somebody or, you know, something to like a, something to remember them by or where you were at some event together. Um, so to start to make Revere more of a journal, not more of a journal, but um, in addition to just notes, like something that looks and feels more like a journal of your relationships. And I have a lot of ideas around that. And photos is a big piece of that. Uh, and there's like little stuff like forgot pastor flow that's done. An architectural refactor uh, that I did last week uh, because when I, as I've been building this, obviously my knowledge is growing. And when I come back to work on certain things, I realize like I didn't separate them well or structure them well. Some changes are difficult. Um, and when I reach something like that, I take the time to refactor and kind of restructure the way the different parts of the app are organized so that changes are easier. Um, posts and comms, this is kind of ongoing. Uh, that's related to the relaunch. So blog posts, communications, things that I need to have in place when I do like, share this with existing users. Uh, classic up, app updates, so the app that's currently in the App Store, which is gonna be migrated to this new one, uh, needs to have some updates like a little message that tells people that it's coming up. Certain people might be affected, certain features might be different, so I wanna let people know, so that's part of that. Uh, In-app purchase is actually finished, I just haven't done the full testing, so I can't mark it as done. And same thing with the migration, uh, so all the code has been written to move people from one, uh, from the older database over to the newer one with its newer structure, but I also haven't tested that fully yet, so I can't mark that as done. But realistically, like I was hoping to launch with some beta users next week, um, but in the spirit of not turning this into a project that I don't enjoy doing, I don't want to grind and rush it. Uh, I just want to keep going as I have, enjoying it day by day, and if a day comes that I can't work on it for whatever reason or I don't feel like it, I just don't. So no deadlines. That is an anti-goal here. Um, but let me jump in and show you some actual features. So the first one 
I'll show you is uh, check-in reminders. Um, so let me bring up, let me just start doing the screen recording here. And I'll bring up uh, the check-in reminders. Now these are, these are something that the original app didn't have. They had something called reach out reminders, which just sent you a random notification uh, to reach out to someone. But I found that was kind of like useless because um, it was just saying like, hey, here's a name you wanted to be reminded of to reach out. But realistically, it's also important to know why you wanted to reach out and not just like, oh, I want to stay in touch with this person, but give them a reason or provide a reason why or have a place to put your, your reason why. So I'll give you an example here. So like, um, oh, you know why? Because I have so many um, reminders. So let me just kind of remove a few of these. Um, this might take a second, but it won't be too long. And you get to see this screen here. Let's get rid of Hulk Hogan. So just do some deletes. Okay, so now if I jump in, let's say here, uh, I have a cousin in uh, university and I wanna check how things have been going. So I can have a check reminder and say, how is school going? And now that's the kind of thing that you want to rem be reminded of every so often, not just once. And let's say for the next six months of the term, I want to check in every month. It would be annoying to have to add six separate reminders for the next six months. So here I can just go in and I can set a reminder and say it's recurring. Uh, it's going to be monthly. And then you can just remind me on the first of the month. And then I can save that. And now you can see here next uh, reminder is in July, July 1st. So it's kind of the next month uh, coming up. Uh, next first of the month coming up and then there's little icons here you can see that it says one month and it shows you it's recurring now if you had multiple ones you could swipe through them so you could have multiple things that you want to check in with people about and for any given person you can swipe through or you can look here and see all the different people here um, that's an ugly pill that I have to the label there I have to fix that but I'll talk about that in in-app purchasing so if I come back here you can see that I, ha I have some actual reminders so where he got a summer job, how final exams went. And those two things kind of show the difference between a regular reminder and a check-in reminder. A regular reminder is one that kind of comes and goes and that's it. Um, and once it's done, it's done, it's a one time. Whereas check-in reminders are, are more ongoing things. And so I had one, for example, uh, a friend who's like recovering from surgery. So I might say, you know, every, uh, let's say month, you know, check in with them. Um, and you'll see here, I wanted to show this part of the features. This, this page is like simple looking. But there's a lot of stuff going on underneath. So for daily reminders, the time is probably important, right? It's not, I can't just like say, I'll give you a reminder every day at 8 a.m. Because if you're asking to be reminded, it probably means maybe call this person at this time, maybe to remind them to do, you know, take some medicine or it's the end of their day, check in how their day went. Um, Weekly reminders are a little bit different. So maybe the hour isn't important, but definitely the day is important. So you can choose which day you're um, being reminded on. Monthly is a little bit different. So monthly probably doesn't matter the day of the week necessarily, but maybe the day of the month. So you can set you know, on the first Wednesday of the month, for example. And then the other three, three months, six months, and every year, these are month-based. So every three months, and you can pick which month you want it to start in. So maybe, I don't want to be reminded from now until sometime I can say, you know what, send me the first one in November. And here you'll see, you see at the bottom, there's a little bit of text telling you exactly when that reminder will come on the 1st of November in the morning and then every three months. And so when I save this, you'll see that the check-in here at the last one says next check-in November 1st. So it seems simple, but there's a lot of logic there that I had to really figure out and make work. So that's, uh, that was hard for me. So check in reminders, that's how that looks. So let me show you uh, the other feature. This one is called a uh, news toasts or news toast sheet. And that's this little icon up at the top right corner. So when I pop this up, I can see here uh, a bunch of little messages. Now what's, this is a place where I can tell users about news for Revere or things that are happening or maybe some interesting new features that don't just like come and go like a lot of apps. They'll be like, here's the update. Do you want to look at it? It's like, no, I was trying to add a note, like get out of the way and you dismiss it, but you can never see it again. And I want to be in more communication with people using the app. So 
I created this little page so that I can put things here and I can persist them as long as I want. And what's great about this is that it's not based on like an app update being released. So I can change these anytime I want, even without shipping an app update through the App Store. And let me show you uh, how that works. So if I go to my console, I have my remote config here. And I have, these are the different things that I can configure and I've created these myself uh, based on what I wanna do. And so here you can see is the page for those toast posts. And here you can see Taylor rocks or this one says Taylor sucks. Oh, I think that's because I have, um, I've changed this one. So let me, hold on a sec. That might be because that was already running. Yeah, okay, so I had made this change before and the app, I hadn't relaunched it. So imagine you, I've made a change um, and the app has been relaunched. Now, if I click this, it goes back to it, the, the text that I have here. So I know that wasn't a, a great demo. So let me do this properly. So now you can see that that text says Taylor sucks. Obviously she does not. Uh, so I can put in here Taylor rocks, but maybe I don't want to put this buy tickets button here. So I can say false. And then maybe for the Weird Al thing, I wanna, you know what? It sounds better when I say just eat it. And so I can add that there. And then I save this and then I publish those changes. And those are gonna go out now. And now when I relaunch the app, you'll see the little red dot in the corner telling you that there's a new stuff. Um, and that dot will animate if the person's in the app, they'll see that kind of like little guy pop up. And um, now you can see Taylor rocks. I removed one of the buttons and you can see at the bottom, it says just eat it. Um, so that's an example here. The other thing that is nice that uh, the dot is not, doesn't disappear until you decide it does. Because if I'm interested in this app and I wanna maybe read stuff, I want to be able to decide when I've read it. I hate when an app says, oh, you've seen this page? That means you've read everything. No, um, I haven't. <laughs> Uh, so, but when I do read everything, I can hit this and that will now remove the red dot. And as you notice, there's like a little animation, which I've just been playing with more of those. The, there's a theme in the app where they're not really, like it doesn't look great, to be honest. Like there's a lot of stuff that I visually have a lot of things I wanna change, but it's actually quite, like everything works, works and works the way I want. And so the visual stuff's fun. Uh, rebuilding interfaces, animating stuff. Like I enjoy that stuff. The tougher part is like making the functionality for me. Um, so I'm quite happy to just have the functionality and even ship it with some of these, you know, animations that maybe don't look how I want or a label that looks a little bit weird. Um, so now let me show you, and I appreciate everybody who's still watching this. Let me show you the, the Google Cloud storage thing. So the storage thing is uh, meant to uh, it's not meant for yet uploading profile pictures. It's meant for migrating and supporting profile pictures that people have uploaded in the previous version of the app. So I don't have a way to like pick a photo yet and add it from the new version that only exists in the old one, but I still wanna support anything that people have already uploaded. And so that's why I built this functionality. So I'm just gonna navigate here and kind of simulate that. So let's say there's a folder here um, and I have a picture of Millie very cute and so imagine this person had uploaded this in the previous app and you can see here in the in the app there's a the first entry there's Millie bird and so now Millie is a photo there and you can see here automatically I have it set up that it creates different size photos for different purposes so the smallest one is for profile pictures uh, and then there's two other sizes for like medium and large. And then the original is also always available if you really want the full, full version. Um, and then inside the database, I can go in and I know uh, BD. I know all these off by heart because I've been testing this. So there's the avatar image file name. And if you remember the file was just Millie. So I'm gonna update that and now if I come back to the app, the next time that screen refreshes, you can see Millie's picture shows up. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on in the background. Um, I'm very happy that I got that working. And I also wanted to just quickly show you um, that this code here is quite simple. This is the, this is the, 
This is the file that controls the circle with either the initials or the picture. And the only thing I'm doing here is I'm going to the cloud manager and saying, hey, fetch me a profile photo with the image name um, of this person. And in this case, that would have been populated with Millie. And he's using this function, which is I'm not gonna go into, but here I have this additional function, which I'm not currently using for like real photos, like the ones attached to notes, like full size ones. Um, and you can see here that I can update these with a different size. So in this case, it's defaults to original um, if you don't specify, but you can also specify small, medium, and large. And then that corresponds to the storage, uh, the file sizes, which are automatically given prefixes, you know, 300, 600, 1200, that corresponds to these guys right here. Um, there's another nice feature where some of the photos that I don't need to be on the device all the time go into a caches directory, which lets iOS clear them out if it wants to. So if your device is running out of space, Revere's never going to uh, just keep hogging a bunch of that space for images that you don't look at uh, regularly. Um, so it's a way for me just to be thoughtful about taking up space on people's phones because we've all had those apps where you're like, how is this simple app taking up a gigabyte of my phone's memory. It's because they don't uh, thoughtfully put it into directories that the system is allowed to go in and clear out. So I saw that that was possible and I thought, this is cool, I'm gonna do that. So that's the, that's the kind of cloud uh, storage, the profile photo support. There's a lot more uh, that's part of this, but I won't go into those details here. Um, and then the other thing I just wanted to share was the in-app purchase stuff, um, because the in-app purchase is actually quite, um, uh, I, I was quite deliberate in how I wanted this to feel. So if I come here in groups, groups is a premium feature, which means that you have to have a, a subscription to, to use it, at least to use it un, in an unlimited way. But what's really important to me that, is that the free version of Revere is always good. It always feels nice and it doesn't look like a billboard where I'm constantly trying to upsell you. I was using another uh, personal CRM manager recently trying uh, just do trying out the new version and, and doing some just analysis of how they approach things and it's just constantly trying to upsell you like you can you can't even sign up without signing up for a free trial it's really annoying and I don't like that and I don't want to be part of that in my personal projects um, I can understand that there's probably some conversion rate you know if you a b tested this if you force people into a trial there's some amount of you know, maybe you, you get generate more money, but I'm a, a big believer that that's like a temporary thing. Um, you might generate more money in the, in the short term, but if you're trying to build something for the long term, those things don't endear you to people. And I can definitely say from my experience using that app that it was extremely annoying to just get set up. And by the time I was actually entering notes, I was, I was annoyed, which is not what I want people to feel when they're using my app. So in this case, groups, you can see there's nothing telling you that it's a premium feature. And that's because I've set it, the logic of in-app purchasing up to be, um, to give you some free group, groups, like why not try free ones? And that's something that's not in the current one. So let's say coffee shop pals. Let's just add that. So the moment I add that, oh, let me just, why, yeah, okay. So now you can see here, I've added a group and a little label comes up, says, hey, you've used one out of three. It's not too intrusive. It's green, gentle, um, and it'll kind of sit there, but it doesn't show when you have zero because maybe you don't care about that feature, so why do you need to see the advertisement? Um, and then when you add more, so let me say group of, I guess I don't have to put the group of, that's implied. So you can see that that updates two to three. And if I add another group, um, let's call this party panels. Boom. Now you can see it changes. And now this label obviously is not final, um, but the functionality is just meant to test functionality. So you have three, it's like, Hey, you've used up all your groups. Now you can tap to upgrade and you get the in-app purchase screen. So in-app purchasing, um, these, each of these paywalls will be different. So if you trigger it for groups, you get a group specific one. Um, this is the generic one for now. And then there's also other things like check-in reminders. So you can only have three check-in reminders. So if I try to hit this, I get the paywall here as well. Um, or if I try to do it from a person, let's say I want to add something for Millie, I also get the paywall there if I try to add a check-in reminder. Um, so 
there's all kinds of stuff that all the logic for in-app purchases is there. It has that nice, like you get three free things. There's a lot of complicated stuff that I had to do there. For example, um, it's three total check-in reminders, not three per person, which meant that I had to like fetch data in different ways. I'm not gonna be able to explain how, how tricky that was, but based on the data model, I had to come up with like a clever way to do it and re-architect some stuff, but I got it working. And what I liked about that was that I originally did, I was like, well, I don't wanna give three check-in notes per person. That's like pretty generous. And no one's like, that might be like, you never upgrade. I need it to be three per account. Um, so I had to like, I had to like pull information across all the people's accounts or all, not people's, but all the person's uh, list of people and just sum all of those. So I have to figure out a new function to do that. But all that stuff's working really nicely. Um, all of the stuff in the project is like on its way. And so I'm hoping maybe in two weeks, the first beta testers will start to uh, use it. The first real migrations with real data will start to happen along with those beta testers. Um, but most importantly, I'm just really happy and impressed that I was able to get this far. I feel like I've got escape velocity on this project or on learning to program. Um, now I'm no longer really thinking about this code. I'm looking at it and I understand all of it. I can read it. Sometimes I forget what I did, but after reading, I'm like, oh, right, that's what past Mark was up to. Um, and it feels more like I'm reading a book in a language I know rather than reading something in a foreign language I'm trying to learn. So all that's been great. And uh, I appreciate everybody who's been following along and just kind of cheerleading me on. That's been nice. Uh, so if you've made it to this end of this video, you're definitely one of those folks. Anyway, I'll keep you updated in the next few weeks as um, things happen. And uh, I might even, uh, I'll probably just kind of like do a check-in video when the Worldwide Developers Conference at Apple happens next week, because that'll mark the exact one year since I started this whole thing. It'll be fun to just look to see how far I got in one year. Maybe I'll revisit some of my old journals that I was writing in those early days and we'll have a laugh. Anyway, so I'll leave that update there. Thanks for uh, watching this far.